welcome to this episode of Retro Game Living Room. Today we're going to be taking a look at a video game console so rare that not only do hardly any pictures exist of it online, but no videos exist of it either. This is the off-the-wall projector video cartridge system designed by Funsation. So stick around. Before we take a look at the off-the-wall projector, first let me tell you a little bit about it. I want to tell you how I came across this game system. In December of last year, 2017, I decided to do a little project where I took all the video game ads from all the Christmas catalogs and wish books on wishbookweb.com and put them into a single album. That's when I got to the 1989 Sears Wish Book and came across a video game system that I had never, ever heard of, which is kind of rare for me. With zero results having been returned by a Google search, I turned to Reddit in a community called R, Tip of My Joystick, which specializes in helping people remember the names of forgotten games. Almost immediately, a user named Lonely Squire of Gothos returned two leads about something named the Savvy Projection System. Both links were to internet forums discussing projector video game systems. And both links were by a user named Scaramouche, who seemed to be at this point the only person on the entire internet who knew anything about this video game console. Back on Reddit, user BDR76 found additional information and a link where the console was for sale on a Belgium-based marketplace. And that's how I came to be the proud owner of the electronic off-the-wall video cartridge system. Funsation seems to have been a European manufacturer of tabletop LCD games. Some of those games were also sold in the U.S. through service merchandise. All of the off-the-wall projector games appear to be ports of previously released Funsation LCD games. As for Savvy, they appear to be a company that just licensed and localized toys throughout Europe. Here's a look at the off-the-wall projector, also known as the electronic LCD projector. This one we can see was made by Savvy. On the side of the game, on the side of the box, we see some controls. We also see six of the cartridges available for the system. I like how the arrow is showing where the cartridge goes because otherwise that might be difficult to figure out. Let's go ahead and take the projector out of its package. There is another piece of styrofoam in there, but that doesn't want to come loose today. So we see that it has a little instruction, a little special slot where the instruction would go, and the console itself. The console comes with a cartridge which is still taped in. This was actually sealed when I got it, and I opened it up just before I made this video. So we'll take a look at the cartridge later, see what the instructions have to tell us. I mean, really? It's all French to me. Looking more closely at the projector, it's like a fire engine red. Here we have what looks like the power switch, which is still taped over. I guess that's so it doesn't accidentally come on in shipment. I don't know. We have the projector, which possibly is adjustable. And then we have the two controllers, which come up and we have trigger buttons and two face buttons. So we have a total of six buttons on the system. On the bottom of the system, we can see where the design credit comes. Copyright 1989, 
fun station patent pending so I couldn't find I couldn't figure out what the patent was to look this up move the battery door and looking inside we can see something interesting here so we see it takes C size batteries but it also has a spot for a single double A probably some batteries are powering the electronics like the computerized parts and the other batteries are powering the projector light so let's go ahead and get some batteries in this it's time for the battery bag after some finagling, I finally got the cartridge battery to go in the system. And I found out that my I estimation, I estimation was incorrect. These are not C size batteries. In fact, this takes 3D batteries. Look at that. It actually is on when it comes. Let's take off this tape. switch it off all right now that we have the battery cover back in place this console is ready for action before we play we're gonna have to get out the cartridge which I have here this cartridge will go and slide the slot on the off the wall projector. The system handles, <laughs> they're really, really tempting to like kind of like move around like you would with a modern motion controller. They don't actually do anything. So in effect, you have two triggers and then we have the yellow and red buttons on each stick, which are this duplicates of the same button. So you can press the, you can do the action and press the button with either thumb. So in effect, we actually have four actions, both triggers, which are distinct. And then the, the two yellow and red buttons on the top. Let's go ahead and play this. We're going to have to do it with the lights out. I'll get this in focus with my, with the focuser adjuster finger majigger and let's play this game this is grand prix the first thing i'm going to do is turn on the sound then i'm going to select if i want to play game one or two i'll start with game one then we'll start the game this is very similar to a game that we played on the projector made the system. system in an earlier review So I'm moving, I'm compressing the left trigger and the right trigger to move left and right. The goal of this game is just to not crash into any of the cars. So you have three lanes of travel and you just wait for a car to pass you by before you move out of the way. There's really not a whole lot to this. I really wish I had some more of the games for this system, but those seem just impossible. Probably a pipe dream that I'll ever have another console, a cartridge for this console. The music is not good. I don't even know if the camera's picking it up, but it's a little tick, tick, tick sound. And then a beep sound when I make a move. The game on level one is super easy and I feel like I can do this forever. What's kind of neat about this, especially compared to the light games projector console or the projector mega video game system, is that we have some more background graphics. So we have little graphics of, you know, the road whizzing by, and every now and then we have a guy with a flag. This is at a curve constantly, so you're constantly turning, which threw me for a loop a little bit at first, but, you know, once you get used to which of the three lanes you're in. And it's pretty easy to tell where you are. What this game doesn't do is, it doesn't seem to ever trap you. So that's a distinct difference between this and the Grand Prix version on the Projector Mega video game system. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the console off. And with the console off, I turn it back on. You'll see that my game is still in progress, and what that beeping sound was is me crashing. You can see in the upper left, instead of 
under the game one icon, instead of counting how many lives I have left, it counts how many crashes I have left. Let me just go ahead and game over. So now that we're gamed over, I'm going to go ahead and start this game on level two. So what we're going to have is just a much faster paced version of this game. Here it's easier to make little mistakes and to slip up. The cars move much faster and the traffic patterns become more difficult. It's all about, it's all just about getting out of the way of those cars as they come. And here sometimes you have to move two spaces out of the way in order to avoid a collision. This is a lot more challenging. You have to pay a lot more attention to the game itself, but I mean, this is still a really super easy game. I'd really love to see what some of the, some of the other games play on this. How they use the buttons on the joystick and the dual triggers. I feel like I can probably keep going on this forever, so I think now is a good time for me just to go ahead and end the gameplay portion of this video. But before I do that, in the dark, the projector does look kind of cool. You kind of had to see it. It's all glowy and red. It's very, it's a pretty console. It's like a damn sports car. The off the wall projector video cartridge system is a really nice looking piece of hardware. It's unique in its design. And I think it had a lot of promise, even though it was just an LCD projector game system, with how it could use the dual triggers on the dual joysticks with the two buttons. It would be even cooler if moving the joysticks did anything at all in the game, but they don't. But it's really cool because you, know, you can just hold it like this and you know it's meant to be relaxed with and held so you don't have to have it propped up against something or on a flat surface. You can even hold it in the air so it's almost like a handheld projector in a lot of ways because this is meant to be played on your ceiling or on your wall and it's a heck of a lot easier to use than the projector mega video game or the light games console. As for Grand Prix, it's a pretty well designed LCD game, but it's super easy. I wish I, I really wish I had some more to show you on this system. It's a great system. It's incredibly rare. I'm not even sure if it ever officially released in the US. It definitely was released in France and that's about all we know about this console for sure. If you're a game collector, if you see it, get it. Especially if you see it for a good price. Even if you see a loose cartridge for it, get it. And you'll probably be able to sell it to another collector like me. Or hang on to it. I'd appreciate and value. Or hang on to it in hopes that one day you'll find your own off the wall projector. This is going to be the last in a very long time of my projector video game console series because I don't own any more projector video game consoles. I don't have any more on my list right now to get. With that said, I'll see you next time when we take a look at more rare cool, unique, and amazing games here on Retro Game Living Room.